Section 2.7 continued. Here what we want to do is to graph an absolute value inequality. We want to follow the same procedures as we did with graphing inequalities. We want to determine whether it's a solid or dashed line. We want to pick a point and determine where to shade. Or we could use the symbol by greater than or less than or greater than or equal to or less than or equal to and determine where to shade. So the real thing is just actually graphing my absolute value function. Here we're given y is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 3. So recall that our general function for absolute value is y equal to a absolute value of x minus h plus k, where the vertex is designated by h comma k. Here, h is going to be a negative 2. We know that because the general formula is minus, and on the problem I have a plus sign. Therefore, h has to be a negative negative to make that a plus 2. My k is a negative 3. Now I can just graph my vertex a negative 2, negative 3. I can also graph by a translation, or what I could do is just pick ordered pairs, 2 to the right and 2 to the left, to get my shape that I need. Well, if I picked 1 to the right, that's going to be a negative 1. A negative 1 plus 2 is 1. The absolute value of a negative 1 is 1. 1 minus 3 is a negative 2. And 0 gives me the absolute value of 2, which is 2. 2 minus 3, which is a negative 1. And those match corresponding to the left side values of my vertex. And that gives me my shape. Now, with this greater than or equal to, I know that I have a solid line. The quick way to shade is to take a look at my y value and its inequality. So y is greater than or equal to this graph of the line. Therefore, I should know that I'm going to graph inside my function. Or I could select a point in the interior. I can select a point that is on the inside of my function or on the outside. If I pick a point on the outside of the function, I'm going to pick a value of a positive 1, negative 1, because I know that's not on my line. So if I substitute that in, I'm going to have a negative 1 for y is greater than or equal to the absolute value of 1 plus 2 minus 3. That's going to give me a negative 1 is greater than or equal to. 1 plus 2 is 3. The absolute value of 3 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. A negative 1 is greater than or equal to 0. That is false. Therefore, all values on the exterior are false. So the values that solve my problem or solve this absolute inequality are going to be the solid line and the region in the interior of my function. Again, we can find the vertex and graph the solution, and then shade to find the actual region that satisfies this absolute value inequality. Remember, my vertex is going to be hk. h is represented by the value added or subtracted from my variable term inside the absolute value. Here, there isn't a value there, so that would be 0. And my k is the negative 1. So I graph my vertex, which is a 0, negative 1 then I can select points to the right and left. If I select points to the right, I'm going to choose 1. 1 times 2 is 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2 minus 1, which is going to give me 1. And if I chose 2, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3 after the absolute value. And they're going to correspond to the x values on the other side of my vertex. And we notice that this is a vertical stretch of 2. Now I can select a point on the interior or exterior. I can select 0, 0 on the interior. But I think from looking at my function, y is less than or equal to this line, I know that my solution is actually going to be on the exterior of my graph. But let's verify anyways by selecting a point 0, 0. 
When I substitute, I'm going to get 0 is less than or equal to. 2 times 0 is 0. 0, the absolute value of that is 0. 0 minus 1 is a negative 1. 0 is less than or equal to a negative 1 is false. And that represents a point that's in the interior of my function. Therefore, those are false. And that means that the points on the exterior of my function are the ones that solve this inequality and also include the points that are on the line itself. One more example to graph. Let's solve this for a y. y is less than. I subtract this quantity on both sides, a negative absolute value of x minus 3 plus 3. I'm going to get my vertex at h comma k. h is going to give us a positive 3. And k is a positive 3. So my vertex is at 3, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Then I can select a point on either side. If I select 2, 2 minus 3 is a negative 1. The absolute value of a negative 1 is 1, but that makes it a negative 1. A negative 1 plus 3 is 2, so 2, 2. And then I can select 1. 1 minus 3 is a negative 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2, but that makes it a negative 2. A negative 2 plus 3 is 1. And, of course, those map on the opposite side of my vertex. And now what I want to do is to determine whether this is a solid or dashed line. And, of course, it is a dashed line and a dashed line here. And if I take a look at my inequality, y is less than this line, then I know that my shaded area is going to be on the inside of that function. But does not include any values on the graph itself because it is dashed. We can verify this by selecting a point on the inside or outside of the function. Let's pick one of the easiest ones, which would be on the inside, which would be 1, 0. That should turn out to be true. So we have y, which is 0. It's less than a negative absolute value of x, which is 1, minus 3, plus 3. When I simplify, 0 is less than 1 minus 3 is a negative 2. The absolute value of a negative 2 is 2, but that makes it negative. A negative 2 plus 3 is 1. And 0 is less than 1 is true. And recall that was selected from interior points of my graph. And that region is true, so therefore my graphing is correct. Our next set of examples wants us to generate an inequality for the graph and its bounded area that is shaded. So here, what we want to do is we're giving an absolute value graph. We know that because of the V shape that is on our graph. We know that a general function for absolute value looks like this. Y is equal to A, absolute value of X minus H plus K. And we know that our vertex is going to be h comma k. And I can determine a vertex by the given graph. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, x. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, a negative 5 for the y value. Then I can take a look at the graph itself and see that the ordered pairs to the left and right of my vertex are climbing by a multiple of 1. They're not stretching or shrinking. Therefore, I know that this A value is going to be 1. So all I need to do is actually substitute into my graph the values. So I have Y, and then I have my absolute value, X minus 3 minus 5. I also know that my V-shaped graph is pointing up. Therefore, I know that this is not flipped over my x-axis. So therefore, I know that this is a positive on the exterior. I know that the values of my shaded region are above this graphed line. 
therefore this must be y is greater than this value. And I also know that the line is dashed, therefore it stays as just a greater than. Therefore the solution is y is greater than the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 5. Our next graph again represents an absolute value graph. So again, I'm going to use the general function, which is y equals a x minus h plus k. I can determine the vertex to be h and k, and I know that this is 1, 2, 3, 4 for h, and for k, 1, 2, 3. And I can substitute in y. A is going to be determined by looking at the vertex and see if it's being stretched or shrinking. And here it's moving by units of 1, so there's not a stretch or a shrink. But this is flipped. Therefore, this must be a negative absolute value of x minus 4, because h is a positive 4, plus 3. I know that my line is dashed, so I won't have any equality. Now I just have to determine where is it's being shaded. And here it's above the line, therefore that would be y is greater than the negative absolute value of x minus 4 plus 3. Our next graph is a vertical line. And notice this intersects just the x-axis. So therefore, I know that this inequality is going to have x equal to 3 because it intersects the x-axis at 1, 2, 3. Now I just have to determine whether this is x greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. So x and 3. I have a solid line, so I know I'm going to have an equality value here. I also know that the values of x are to the right are greater than this line. Therefore, this is x is greater than or equal to 3.